So Tyranitar gonna get faked out, okay. He probably thought I was setting up. So look, here it is. Here's a 100% accurate, 100 base power rock move. And we're gonna be able to KO the Incineroar. Right away, that's our Incineroar delete button. All right, trainers, so this is the team that I have here. What I wanted to do is I wanted to take the opportunity to bring this team in the showdown to kind of do a breakdown. So as you guys can see here, on the Excadrill, we did give it the clear amulet item. What I decided to do here is I decided to go ahead and give it the adamant nature since we can afford those extra EVs. It's speed. We decided to max its speed. Normally we opt for jolly nature, but adamant nature is pretty good, especially with the new speed ties in this meta. I gave it the Terra ground to kind of boost its earthquake and stomping tantrum. It does have sand rush, so sand rush is going to work really well in the core of the Tyranitar that I'm going to be using as well. So the idea here is clear amulet to kind of block parting shot and intimidate from Incineroar. So that's kind of the idea there. Um, Tyranitar. Tyranitar is going to be the uh, bread and butter of the team. The Tyranitar kind of did a different spin on it. I know right now there's a lot of physical attackers in this meta. For regulation eight so what i decided to do is i decided to go for the impish nature uh plus defense minus special attack and i just decided to get the uh max hp max defense and i'm using this as more of a utility pokemon uh, i gave it rock slide for the chance to flinch in the case that we do outspeed uh i gave knockoff to it for just good stab damage and you know take away opposing item breaking swipe i opted breaking swipe for this uh tyranitar here normally people go earthquake but i went breaking swipe just to get a little bit more utility uh i know palafin's been running around and cinnamon rillaboom and if I can afford to get Protect off one of my Pokemon and do a Breaking Swipe, that's going to be huge. The Tyranitar's item of choice here is uh, Leftovers to kind of help with that recovery. A lot of opponents are using Rillaboom as well. So I'm going to kind of benefit from their terrain in a sense too. Especially if I use my Terra Flying to pretty much you know absorb any Wood Hammer's Rillaboom will throw out or just avoid its uh, Stomping Tantrum. The really good tech with this team that I made is... Uh, I can spam Earthquake and I can just go Terra flying on the Tyranitar if push comes to shove without having to swap it out so much. So that's a pretty good core there. I did go for Houndstone as well. Houndstone, uh, I gave it the spell tag, Sand Rush as well, just like the extra drill. Again, too, like I said, the speed tiers are a little different. So I did give it the adamant nature. All Sand Rush is going to do is going to double the speed. You know, it's going to double its base speed. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I gave it last respects. Uh, normally, I use Houndstone as a good cleanup Pokemon. I know that I have struggled in the past against the likes of Ursaluna Blood Moon specifically. It kind of walls Houndstone stone in a way i decided to go last respects play rough play rough with the terra fairy uh grim snarl has been a very popular choice in regulation eight so that's pretty much like a way to kind of you know surprise a grim snarl do some massive damage or even like terra dark king gamut stuff like that we got ally switch here so it's kind of weird how to get this move in the game what you got to do is you got to catch the houndstone in the overworld i can't tell you exactly what route it was on but if you can do that, you get ally switch on it because it's a special move. So ally switch I like because if I lead Houndstone and Tyranitar, I can essentially ally switch. And, you know, obviously my opponent's not going to fake out the Houndstone. So the ally switch is going to make sure that Houndstone gets, you know, the, the fake out goes towards him. Uh, last respects, it's going to be able to gain 50 base power for each party member fainted. So I like to keep that in the very back. Uh, protect, of course. Um... This is my secret sauce here. So, you know, I understand how strong Incineroar could be. I understand, you know. It's been dominant in VGC since its inception. So, what I decided to do is I was like, you know, are there any good competitive Pokemon? I know Annihilate is good, but I said, you know what? I'm going to be using Sand. I want some Weather Ball users. So what I did here is I gave Kilowatt an Expert Belt. Timid Nature here, as you guys can see. Uh, I'm just going to use it just to get some damage off, you know. I mean, the team pretty much holds itself together. But the idea is Kilowatt comes out with that Tyranitar. Or I can swap the Tyranitar in. And pretty much say Incineroar is out. I'm going to get that plus two from the ability competitive. And that's going to give me some massive special attack increase. So with that being said, you know, I, I feel like it's a pretty good set. Um, Air Slash as well is really good because if I get that competitive boost, we're going to be able to do lots of damage to, uh, what's it called? Rillaboom. I did give it Volt Switch too. 
Originally, I was going to go for uh, Discharge Spam since I had Excadrill, but Volt Switch is going to be a little bit better to pivot out. Um, next, we have Sylveon. So my Sylveon here, it's going to be a max special attack, max HP, modest nature. So that modest nature is going to boost my special attack, lower my attack, which is fine. Uh, Sylveon, as you guys can see from its stats, it's deceptively bulky for a special defense. I mean, it's really it's like it's legit its highest stat. But we got 110 HP, maxed it out, or the uh, special attack. Uh, I did give it the uh, pixelate ability to where we can abuse Hyper Voice as Stab, Throat Spray to boost its special attack. And as you guys can see here, we have Weather Ball on the Sylveon as well. So just like the Killer Waltrill, after a Throat Spray, Weather Ball is going to be threatening a lot of Pokemon, mainly Incineroar, you know, because that's what's happening. Uh, and it's going to be like another 100 accurate rock move so that's gonna be pretty powerful um i added more power creep on this team i went for the high dragon the high dragon is gonna be very powerful it's gonna be a fast special sweeper timid nature max attack max speed standard so i did give it safety goggles because safety goggles is gonna protect it from the sandstorm as you guys can see how the core really comes together so i gave it safety goggles its abilities level to levitate and that's gonna be really good because i can legit lead excadrill and high dragon i can still kind of get that benefit of the ID I was saying with the Tyranitar without actually burning his terrestrialization. And you know, we gave it a Snarl, Earth Power. I originally had Tailwind at first, but I was never really using it so much, especially with Trick Room teams running around. Cause like I said before, we kind of had some difficulty in the battle testing with uh, Blood Moon Ursa Luna. So both variants of Ursa Luna, they're heavily relying on Trick Room. So the idea is give Taunt to a Dragon and just kind of like, you know, use taunt on those Pokemon such as for Rigoraf. So I feel like that's going to be pretty good there. But yeah, this is pretty much the core. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to showcase some battles. And, you know, yeah, I hope you all enjoy the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because this is just the first of many Regulation H teams I'm going to be able to bring to you guys. All right, what's up, trainers? So this is going to be another battle we're doing here. So as you guys can see, I kind of have everything set up. What I want to do here is my opponent has a Incineroar and on the showdown ladder we've been spanking Incineroar. So I kind of want to lead the Kilowattro and the Tyranitar. I see that he has a Grimmsnarl. You know Grimmsnarl is going to want to set screens up and I could bring Sylveon. That's a little too obvious. But we're going to bring our Secret Sauce and the Houndstone. And let's see what else we can bring here. I think Excadrill could be pretty good. But I kind of want to bring High Dragon. So let's go ahead and start this battle. See what we could do. Like I said, the Kilowattro, it's a pretty good Pokemon. I like using it. I'm pretty sure you guys seen the thumbnail and were like, what the heck is Kilowattro doing there? But I'm really about to show you guys, you know, because like, pretty much I kind of figured that with Kilowattro, you got opponents bringing Rillaboom and Incineroar to every battle. So that's kind of like my delete button. So what I'm going to do is, let's see. Yeah, so my opponent did bring his Incineroar turn one. So that's going to be unfortunate for him. So pretty much, I'm going to give you guys a thought process of my opponent. So <clears throat> we're going to get this boost here. I'm going to assume that my opponent thinks they're just going to go ahead and take the uh, Palafin out. Because no one's going to see Weather Ball being a rock move on the Incineroar. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go for Weather Ball on the Incineroar here. And let's see. He's probably going to swap Palafin. So I could probably afford to, let's see. I could probably afford to uh, knock off into the Palafin slot. He may honestly swap out. So Palafin going to go for the Protect. Let's see. Okay. So Tyranitar going to get faked out. Okay. He probably thought I was setting up. So look, here it is. Here's 100% accurate, 100 base power rock move. And we're going to be able to KO the Incineroar. Right away, that's our Incineroar delete button. Kilo Watcher. Like I said, it's such a good Pokemon. My opponent's probably like wondering what the heck happened. So there we go. We're going to be able to heal up some of that chip damage. So let's see. Ooh, Rillaboom's going to come out. Okay. So if my opponent wants to take away the uh, Palafin, this is going to be his only chance. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to protect the uh, Palafin. And what I want to do... Well, actually, let's do this. 
Let's double protect. We know that fake out's coming. And just in case, I'm going to send out Houndstone. Just in case he decides to uh, bring out Grimmsnarl or something. Or something like that. Okay, shit. So he did bring out Grimmsnarl. So like I said, the only reason I, I protected here because <clears throat> protect's going to be able to stop it. And then I was able to kind of pivot. Because if this Rillaboom protect, uh, fakes out the Houndstone, it doesn't affect it because it's a ghost type. So that's what we're going to kind of go for. So Rillaboom's going to be gutsy. Rillaboom's going to go for a nasty Swords Dance. Okay. That, that's going to be some pressure. I will say that's going to be some pressure. <clears throat> okay, so let's see what's going on now. Okay, so I can do a few things here. Um, my opponent has Palafin. Okay, so he brought that. <clears throat> okay, so I think the obvious play would be to air slash the Rillaboom. And see, my opponent's never going to know that I have this. Play rough. Terra Fairy, play rough. Adamant Nature. Let's see if we can take this Brimstone out. Let's see. So we're going to go ahead and use that Terrestrialization. So there we go. Oh man, we got the fairy dog on the field. Let's see what we can do. Oh, grassy glide though. Killer Waltrill gonna go down to the grassy glide. That's crazy. Yeah, Killer Waltrill, it's powerful. It's a sneak. It is a sneak though. So Grimmsnarl gonna go for the light screen. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Special moves. So there's the Terra, Terra Fairy play rough. Let's see. Okay, so we're not able to kill right away. I was gonna opt for choice ban, but I really don't want to get locked into a move. So, okay, let's do this. We still have High Dragon. So we still have High Dragon, so kind of what I want to do here is I can go for a taunt. Well, let's do this. Let's Earth Power the Grimmsnarl. And let's see. I guess we'll protect on the Houndstone. I guess that'll be the play. Okay, so Grimmsnarl gonna go for the Reflect as well, okay. Like I said, Grimmsnarl is such a good Pokemon. I really need to incorporate this on some of my teams. I don't normally use screens too often. That's really not my play style unless I'm playing snow. But now this thing is really doing good. That 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 really boobs looking scary. What is it? Plus four. Okay, snap, Palafin. Palafin's gonna come out here. Okay, let's see. Okay, so kind of what I'm thinking of doing here. See, Pal Pal Palafin is a wrench on the team a little bit. So I think what I want to do here, we still got Houndstone up. Rillaboom's gonna be plus four. My opponent has a lot of things going on. So let's see, let's see, let's see. I could drop a Draco. Let's see. So I guess we drop a Draco on Rillaboom. And honestly, let's get some of that last respects damage. I don't know. I know Rillaboom can't fake us out. He may honestly take out the Houndstone. Okay, so Rillaboom gonna tear after. <clears throat> okay. So Rillaboom gonna go Terra. Okay, so Palafin's gonna protect. Okay, good that I doubled into the Rillaboom. I really let Rillaboom get out of hand here. So there's that Grassy Glide. Plus four. Grassy Terrain still up. And it's able to KO the High Dragon. 
Yeah, Rillaboom Swords Dance. That could be the new meta. That could be the new meta, but there's the last respects. Decent damage. Sandstorm's gonna subside. Let's see. Let's see if we can't get the comeback play here. So we're gonna send Tyranitar out. Okay, so we're able to get the uh, Tyranitar back up. Let's see what we can do. So Tyranitar is out. I'm gonna go to protect the Tyranitar here. And what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and hit another last respect from that Rillaboom. That Rillaboom is too potent right now. Rillaboom with Swords Dance is so good in this meta. And my opponent's teaching me that lesson the hard way. So we are able to take the Rillaboom out. I'm assuming, hopefully, that this Palafin attacks the uh, Tyranitar here. Ooh, Ice Punch. Jeez, okay. Wave Crash could have been better. Okay, let's see. So let's see what we can do here. So we're gonna hit the knockoff on the Palafin, or actually we can do the break boost swipe just in case we survive. So let's see what we can do here. Um. Okay, so breaking swipe, and let's let's try this last respect. Cause it's, okay, jet punch. Let's see. Okay, so Tyrants are going to be able to hold on. And that's thanks to the uh, nature that I gave it. So let's see. We are able to get the breaking swipe off, which is huge. Oh, clear amulet on the Palafin. Interesting. You know, I wonder, are, are Palafins running Terra Fire to where they don't get burned? By these prankster Pokemon? So let's see what we can do here. I guess we can go for Rock Slide and Last Respects. Ooh, okay. Yeah, Houndstone gonna be able to take that on the nose like a champ. And there we have it. Like I said, you know, this is a team that I'm trying to use. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next battle here. Yeah, I feel like this team did rather well for the first time. What is up, trainers? So, we're gonna be doing a Regulation H battle, so... I have a Regulation H team. I will be putting the rental code in the description below. This is the team. We got Tyranitar. We got Sylveon. We got Houndstone. I nicknamed Bonisha. We have the MVP of the whole team, Golden Hockey, otherwise known as Killer Waltrill, Excadrill, Hydragon. So this is a pretty good team. My opponent, you can tell he's using a Trick Room team with some of the best meta threats on there right now. So what we're going to do here is, let's see. We're gonna use. We're, we're probably gonna lead Sylveon or something. Let's see. We're gonna bring. We're gonna bring the Kilowattro. The Kilowattro, I think, will be pretty good to bring. Uh, Kilowattro and I think Sylveon could put some work in. Or High Dragon, Tyranitar, and we'll do the uh, Houndstone. So we're gonna hop right into this here. So, like I said, the thing that's been exciting me the most about this meta. Is there's so many different types of Pokemon you can use now as far as, you know, we get to take a walk back and use, like, the things from, like, Regulation A. It's like Regulation A++++, plus plus plus, you know? So let's see what Brad has to offer today. Let's see what his team is doing. Let's see what he's cooking up. So let's see what he leads with. Okay, so Como and Golden Go. Pretty, pretty powerful lead. Pretty offensive. Uh, I set the kill a Waltrill out in hopes that I was able to get the Intimidate boost for... Competitive. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna air slash the Como, and let's see. Actually, I don't want to do this. Yet. The Como would be something good to take out now. Yeah, let's do this. Let's air slash the Como. Well, actually, no. He may actually do uh, some shenanigans. So yeah, this is what we'll do. We'll protect here. And we're going to go Terra Poison, and we're going to pop a Snarl. Hopefully his Kamo doesn't have the ability to soundproof. So that'll be blocking the Snarl all day long. So we're going to go ahead and hop right into this. So 
I went ahead and used my Terra Poison here. I like it on the High Dragon because it only limits it to only one weakness, and that being Psychic now. So let's see. Let's see what happens here. So the Golden Go with the Make It Rain. That's going to be a pretty hard hit. Let's hope that he, we can lose some special attack here. High Dragon going to hold on. Yeah. So there's the Snarl. Soundproof, okay. Oh, okay, so I thought Soundproof also blocked for the ally. So yeah, Golden goes in a bad position here. But Coma O gonna set that Clangorous Soul up. That could be detrimental to us, so let's see. It's gonna boost all of its stats. I should have honestly just dropped a Draco in the beginning. Oh, I did lose some health, so let's go for the air slides. Let's hope we can get a flinch here. That would be really good if we could get a flinch. So, let's do that, and let's just go ahead and attack that Golden Go. Golden Go going to get withdrawn. Okay, that's interesting. Sinister. Sinister going to come out. Not bad. It's going to be able to absorb this easy, though. And it's going to heal the Kamo. Hey, that's a pretty good strategy. So, there's the air slides. Can we get the flinch? Can we get the flinch on that? Kilowattrol? So, there's your Earth Power. I should have dropped the Draco. I didn't know I would outspeed still. Clanging scale. Ooh, okay, so my opponent's gonna take out both of my Pokemon here, okay. Pretty powerful opposition. And, you know, honestly, that was my fault for letting the uh, Golden go get that good spread damage. But that's why I believe Wide Guard's gonna be really good in this meta still. So we're gonna send the Tyranitar, we're gonna send out the Houndstone. I feel like this is gonna be some good synergy here. Um. Kamo does not have Overcoat, so it is going to get hit by this uh, Sandstorm, which could be good here. So there's a Sandstream is going to kick up. So what I need to do here is I need to get rid of this thing. So let's go knock off on the Sinistra. And let's see. We can honestly last respect on the Como. So yeah, I really feel like Houndstone has a lot of synergy to this team. My opponent is going to use the Terrasization. Probably going to use the Terra on there. Sinister there. So let's see. Sinister obviously gonna lose that ghost typing and opt out for the water typing. That's huge, that's huge. So yeah, if I if if my Tyranitar could outspeed, I could have attacked the Sinister instead. So Sinister just gonna bait it all in. Okay. So it looks like we are gonna attack the Sinister anyways. So there's the last respects. We're able to do decent damage to the Sinister. Sinister gonna have a little snack in between now. So let's see, let's see, man. So that knockoff is going to do minimum damage. Not bad. So we do survive another turn. That's huge. And Sandstorm should be able to knock it out. Nice. So is that Sandstorm going to kill it? Yo, Sandstorm MVP. Yeah, I can say I played my team a little sloppy in the beginning. Because I really thought he was going to bring Incineroar out. I really thought. So there we go. Tyranitar is going to get a little bit of leftovers recovery. And the interesting thing is, too, uh, Pokemon with the ability Sandrush, they don't get affected by moves like, uh, they're not going to get affected by the Sandstorm. So what I want to do here is I want to weaken this Earth Luna with a Breaking Swipe. It's probably going to protect. So let's see. Yeah, I think Breaking Swipe is going to be the best play here. What we do outspeed, so maybe we can go for the Rock type attack. Well, let's see. This this is kind of tough. Yeah, let's go for the breaking swipe and the protect. Because I'm assuming he's going to protect. He may protect to where he can get the uh, flame orb off guaranteed. So let's see what happens here. So there's a breaking swipe. Not enough to KO Sinistra. But we do knock down Ursuluna's attack stat ever so slightly. And Ursuluna going to be able to negate that with a bulk up. That's crazy, okay. So yeah, this thing's gonna be very powerful. Trick Room is gonna be up. So let's hope that Sinister can actually go down to this. So Sandstorm taking out two Pokemon, that's huge. Like I said, when I was building this team, I was like, you know what? With all the Focus Sash Pokemon running around, Sandstorm's gonna be the perfect thing to negate that. You can go turn one Protect, 
and you can negate the uh, focus sash that way. Or you can just do like how I did it here. I was able to finish it off without even damaging it. So that's going to be good here. So <clears throat> it's really going to come down to this. You got Golden Go and you got the uh, Earth Luna here. So what I want to do here, this is going to be a tech play. This is going to be a tech play. So what I want to do here is I want to go for the knockoff on the Golden Go. And uh, let's see. He, my opponent may actually use Earthquake here. So I guess I'll go for the double protect. Let's see. I guess I can go for the knockoff here. We'll go knockoff protect. Okay, let's see what happens. I know Golden Go may do want to do make it rain. So headlong rush. Man, okay. Yeah, I should have went for the ally switch here. I really should have went for the ally switch. I kind of saw where I messed up there. And then that, that make it rain. That make it rain is going to be very powerful. Like I said, I kind of fumbled the bag in the beginning by letting Killer Watch would come out too early. So yeah, this is this is gonna be a GG's for my opponent. I think Brad did pretty good here. Definitely. So yeah, that's gonna be a GG. So we're gonna be one or zero one right now. My opponent played very well to the end there. <clears throat> so yeah, Brad's gonna take that first victory. Like I said, regulation H is gonna be a really good time. Okay, so my opponent's going to do the powerful lead he did last battle. So we got the Como and the Goldengo. So the Sandstorm's going to kick up. So let's go ahead and hop into this. So the play I could do here is we know Golden Go is going to be a threat. So I could go here. I kind of want to go Powerhouse. I could go Terra Earthquake here. Let's see. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go Terra Earthquake. And I want to swap out and send out the High Dragon. I feel like this is going to be a pretty powerful lead. We're going to be able to get all that speed from the Sandstorm. As well as getting that extra little bit of power from the Terra on the uh, Excadrill here. So I did opt out for Clear Amulet over Life Orb. Because with Clear Amulet, that allows me to get that consistent damage. Even if Incineroar decides to switch in. I'm not sure if my opponent's going to bring in Incineroar. But that's kind of the play we're going to go for. I do have Terra flying on the Tyranitar just for the same play if I didn't want to swap out. But I didn't really see a reason to burn the Terra yet on the uh, Tyranitar. So let's see. I'm going to go my Terrasalization. We're going to go Terra Ground here. Get that two times adaptability boost from using Terra. So let's see what we can do here. There's the Earthquake. We're going to get the Levitate. There's your Earthquake. So we're going to do massive damage. We should be able to KO Goldengo. Goldengo is going to get KO'd. And Como is going to take more than three quarters of health damage. So look. And it's still going to go for the Clangorous Soul. So it's going to lose health even further. Maybe you can get in uh, Sandstorm range. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Okay, yeah, it's in Sandstorm range. Okay. Barely. Barely. It holds on another turn. So there's Sinister. Sinister going to be able to heal its ally ever so slightly. And see, the beauty of this combination here is I'm able to use... You know, I got safety goggles on the High Dragon. So I think... I'm pretty sure that protects me from the Sandstorm as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go for the Earthquake again. Yeah. We can go for the Earthquake again there. And honestly, we can go for Tailwind. But we don't really need that extra speed. We're going to go for the uh, Snarl. We're going to go for the Snarl just to do some damage to that uh, Sinister there. So there's Levitate. We're going to pop our Earthquake there. Let's see. So come up, Polo didn't get a Fighting Chance. So that Snarl is going to be able to do some nice single target damage now. So there we go. There's the Snarl. Decent damage is going to bring Sinister in range. 
a special attack is going to fall as well. Trick Room may be up, though. Trick Room may be up, but my opponent could turn the tides in a sense. So let's see what their last Pokemon up. So Trick Room's up. It's probably going to be Urge Luna, which is pretty good here because <clears throat> the problem we ran into last time with Urge Luna is Urge Luna is very slow and very powerful. So that thing became a threat. I'm pretty sure Urge Luna is going to want to go for the Excadrill here. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get some more mileage out of that Earthquake. And I'm going to pop Earthquake anyways. Sinistra is going to be a issue. And I know that Headlong Rush could be coming, so let's see. Let's just go for Earthquake for some damage. Earthquake and... I don't know. Let's drop a Draco on the Ursaluna. Ursaluna going to go for the bulk up. Okay. Yeah. Dropping that Draco is going to be the best thing we could have done this turn. So that Machigachi is going to hit. It's going to hit. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt Excadrill. Excadrill going to be hold on, though. So Sinister is going to get a little bit of recovery from that. From hitting both Pokemon, actually. And Excadrill is going to be burnt. So that damage is going to be mitigated from this incoming Earthquake. So that's going to be something that's going to add to the bulk up the opponent did. So we're going to go ahead and drop a Draco right away. Decent damage. Decent damage. So there's the Earthquake. I mean, I guess we can hope for a critical hit. Let's see if we can cut through. No, not at all. So yeah, that shows the power of how devastating a burn can actually be. Pair that out with my opponent's bulk up. So actually, it was going to be hurt by the burn. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go for the protect on the Excadrill. And I want to, let's see. I'm probably honestly just going to snarl here. I'm going to snarl her. I think my opponent is going to want to take my Excadrill out. Unless he decides to go for a facade or something. But it's interesting that my opponent is using Earth Saluna. And he's not even using Flame Warp. I do think the bulk up strategy could be very effective in this meta. Especially with Rillaboom for passive recovery. So there's a headlong rush. Excadrill going to be able to block that there. Let's see what Sinister is up to. Sinister going for the Strength Sap, so Sinister is going to be able to recover so much HP. Because Strength Sap, it, it just literally recovers you based off of the HP stat. Which is kind of busted in my opinion. So yeah, we're going to hit the special attack drop there. Not going to really matter so much. Sinister is going to get hit by that. So yeah, we got to kind of stall this out a little bit. So yeah, what I want to do here, let's see how many turns of Trick Room we have. Two turns of Trick Room. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out into the Kilowattril there. And honestly, hmm, I need to take that Ursaluna out. So, we're going to just Earth Power the Ursaluna. We need that thing off the field. So, I'm hoping my opponent decides to go for another Headlong Rush here. That's kind of what the play could be. If he goes for another Headlong Rush, boom, I'm not using Protect anymore. Kilowattril comes out, and that's going to be very huge for the outplay. So let's see. We're going to be able to resist the Macha Gacha as well. So let's see what Kilowatcha can do. So, ooh, Body Slam. Okay, that's interesting. Hydragon. Hydragon going to get hurt very bad. That was a huge hit with the Paralysis. So there's the Macha Gacha. Kilowatcha going to avoid the attack. So Kilowatcha gets to come in for free. Hydragon going to go down, though. With the critical hit, too. Look at that. So yeah, that Ursaluna is going to be able to survive yet another turn. So let's see. I'm not sure how many turns of sand we have left. Sandstorm going to subside there. Okay. Sandstorm subsided there. So let's let's see what my options are. I could get that Sandstorm back up. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to go back into the Excadrill. I think Excadrill is going to be the play. <clears throat> Essentially, what I'm going to do this turn, let's see. We got one turn of Trick Room, so my opponent's not going to use Trick Room right now. So I'm going to go for the Protect on the Kilowattril, as well as the Excadrill. So the corner we're backed into, we're really going to have to be very defensive and kind of outplay this a little bit. Like I said, it helps in VGC if you guys pay attention to the little battle stats that give you the timers and stuff. 
So yeah, there's a double protect there. So let's see what happens. Okay, the body slam gonna kick in. One of my killer watch will gone. So I guess the worst we can hope for is Sinister goes for Rage Powder. But I don't really think that's gonna matter too much. So let's see what we can do. We're gonna take a little bit of chip damage off of the burn. But yeah, like I said, this is a pretty good team. I, you know, I wanna keep getting this type of content out to everybody. So like I always ask, like the most important thing in my opinion is that you guys in the comments just always let me know how I'm doing. Like, you know, if you guys think I should try this or try that, you know. Like I said, I've been playing VGC since Pokemon Black and White. And I just want to always try to do the best that I can do. So there's a critical hit. We're able to get Air Slash, y'all. Huge. That is huge. So we're not going to do the most damage right now because the bulk up and the burn. But there's the Earthquake. The fact that we can just spam this move for free with two Pokemon... Is why this core is so powerful. I mean, it really helps out here. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to be able to catch that battle back. Like I said, you know, I know this meta is just now starting to shape up. So one of the things I want to be able to make sure that I do is just keep inviting people to the streams. Uh, we normally stream on Wednesday and Tuesday. I don't have a consistent streaming schedule yet because I still, you know, I work a nine to five, you know, I work a nine to five, you know, you got to pay the bills, all that type of stuff.